The way to get rid of tension is to do just the opposite of all the things that cause it. Okay, hello everyone, this is Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today I'll be showing you, this is a continuation of the previous uh, video or segment, I don't know, you know, I, I film all those things so I never know how it's going to turn out in the editing, but anyway, it's a previous sec segment on uh, heavy weathering. So I covered the part uh, in the previous segment about how to put some uh, some rust and texture to your rust and your damage. Did also the video up, uh, before how to do the damage on the tank. So if you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. Uh, it's it's in the video thing. So this is going to be advanced airbrushing technique and advanced weathering technique and rust technique. Uh, I made other videos that are more for for beginner painter and uh, a, a lesser complex effect. So the thing that you're going to be needing now it's going to be the paint part of it is you're going to be needing. Uh, I'm going to be using orange fire, uh, beastie brown, uh, ot orange, charted brown, and gory red. So basically I'm going to mix all those paint, uh, those paint and I'm going to be painting the whole uh, model itself uh, in those rusty color. First of all my base for this is going to be Beastie Brown so I'm going to start with my Beastie Brown. Okay, once your, your coat, like here, uh, you did a base coat of uh, Beastie Brown, it doesn't need to be a base coat that's really thoroughly. Why? Because first of all, rust would be like darker in areas where it's more heavy and lighter. So if you look in the crack here, uh, that's where you're gonna have your brown so your base coat doesn't need to be really thoroughly but you do need to spray the whole model as to why you have to spray the whole model is because if you just spray the area when you, where you want to do that rust effect first of all you can do it anywhere so if it has a lot of battle damage it's gonna work but also if you're gonna be spraying the this mo a model uh, just in one area like for example here where you would have that that damage uh, and that rust showing through it would actually not look good and not even so by spraying the whole model you ensure that your coats are always going to be uh, really even at least your first layer then in uh, and, and you need to keep it light then what you want to go in I like to go in I start with this one because it's a good base for rust it's, it's still it's a brown that has orange tone in it so then me what I like to do is go back in in with uh, the, the, the charted brown so what I'm gonna do right now so we're gonna go in with the charted brown and we're gonna actually uh, spray some area not all of the model so basically what you want to do is just go in with your charted brown and You want to actually work some areas of the thing in charted brown so it's not the same color, it's not uniform. But you do want to have some charted brown some places. So you really want to have like random colors applied to the miniature to make it, uh, you know, simulate rust. So these are the brown because, you know, Rust does have some tones of brown in it, so that's why I go in with the, the charted brown. And like I said, the, the, the rust normally does have some, uh, the, the, the rust that's the more corroded will have some, some brown to it. So that's why you want to go in and apply some charted brown randomly to the places where the rust would, you want to apply it randomly. So you do want to apply it to the areas where the rust would be attacking the model more. So, for example, here in the bottom, I'll spray almost all of the bottom of the tank in charted brown. But still, it's not a thorough spray, but you're seeing it in these areas where, you know, the charted brown is more predominant. Like on the side of the thing. I should have actually for this I should have changed my airbrush needle and go in with my one point uh, point one five millimeter. But actually I'm uh, now right now I'm using four millimeter. So if you if you're really nice and you're using your trigger correctly and you're not too heavy on the air mix air paint ratio, you should be okay. 
so you don't have to worry about that. So basically that's the first part, the charted brown. Then we're gonna go in with the orange. So now you wanna go in with your, uh, like I said, you wanna go in with your orange. And I choose to go with the, the fire orange because it does have a lot of, uh, not the fire orange, but the hot orange because the hot orange has some tones of red in it. So it's gonna give a nice effect over the brown, especially over the brown. And you want to even be even more uh, precise and, and nicer with the hot orange. You really don't want to go in too much. And you, you need to concentrate. This one you can concentrate only in the areas where you're going to have your rust effect showing through. You don't need to cover the whole miniature with this uh, orange mixture. So, but, uh, but of course, only in the areas where you're gonna go in and you're gonna do your uh, your rust uh, effect, that you should spray it, so that way it's all right. Because you already have your base coat of BC Brown that's equalizing everything and making sure everything is equal and, and nice, so you don't have to worry too much about that, but you just wanna work it. But you can you can do spray a couple of uh, areas uh, on the tank where you think you know rust should be showing through, or where you want to go in and, and do some rusting effect. But like I said, it's alright if you don't hit everywhere. And of course, I'm gonna go hit the bottom with a little bit more orange because the bottom is going to be rusted out pretty heavily so basically that's it I hope I hope everything is in frame I'm sorry if it's not so right now I'm going in with the last layer I wanted to put some bloody red but I'm, I'm really satisfied with the, the looks of it right now so I'm not going to be putting some red but now I'm going with the orange fire which is a really orangey orange compared to the other one that has some tones of reds in it a more reddish feeling to it and I just wanna hit the miniature again pretty randomly but still concentrate on some, some areas This is not, you know, this is not a hard technique. It's pretty actually easy to achieve and easy to do. Really not complicated at all. But it's just, it does take more time than normal technique that most people are using. So that's why they call it an advanced technique. Now my airbrush is jammed. Uh, it happens when, you know, when you do a lot of colors and you change a lot of colors, that's something that might happen, your airbrush jamming. So especially if you're running pressure really low. If you're running at low pressure, it's going to happen. basically that's it that's the first part uh, of this video what is about paint so how to paint the first layer which is your um, hold on a second I'll stop everything so you can hear I, I always use my small compressor when I'm doing these video because I'm not using a compressor for a long time so basically that's that's what you get you know that's the effect let me see if you all focused and everything is nice okay so that's the effect you want and you know it really looks like a, a rusty surface and everything especially in the corroded area that we did previously with the putty so uh, a random effect so that's gonna be your first layer 
So basically in the second part, I'll explain to you the second part of this technique, which is uh, how to mask and uh, and do it. It's a little bit like the salt technique, but we're going to use mascol or uh, liquid masking tape or that we're going to put and apply on the on the models, but I'll do this in the second part of the video.